So then we followed up by saying, would you be upset if we didn't cross it? For people who wanted to. And for people who wanted to let go, would you be upset if we did cross it? And this is when it came out. This is on the left. This is the standard question, and this is what we got over here. We got more people saying, keep it, don't close it, than not, by 9 percentage point. Different from the 20 points over here. But mostly what we found out is that about half the public had a permissive opinion. Either they didn't know much about it or they didn't care one way or the other. And I think that is a more realistic viewpoint. And I think if legislators knew more about what the public is really thinking, where they aren't sure what, of the, the intensity of people, we would have a better <clears throat> so, that's to talk about the reason I, I mentioned these policies and it just gives you an idea of where the pollsters really aren't giving us an accurate view. I'm going to go very quickly now and just talk to you about election polling. The reason I want to talk about election polling is pollsters claim that because they're so accurate in elections, we should treat their results on policy matters as though they are accurate representations of the public. From the very first, that was what George Gallup did in 1936. He could predict the presidential election, therefore you can trust his polls. There's nobody to trust him in poll. All right. But can we trust the polls? First of all, all the final polls and predictions, and by the way, these predictions are made about 24 to 48 hours before people actually behave. So we're not talking about long-term predictions. We're talking about something that says, are you going to the library tomorrow or not? You know, not are you going to the library next week, but are you going to tomorrow? Okay. They also refine it by looking only at likely voters. They usually increase their sample sizes. They ask no previous questions before the vote question, so it's not contaminated by a whole bunch of other questions. It's a very simple concept. Vote this person, vote that person. Very different from trying to support or oppose very complex kinds of uh, issues. And most important, the polls aren't even accurate. They are accurate in predicting the final election, at least at the presidential level, but they're not accurate during the regular season. How do we know that? How do we, how can we make a judgment? Well, this is what happened in 2004. It looked like they were all pretty darn close, except for Fox, ironically enough, which predicted that <laughs> Kerry would win. All the others predicted the Bush would win by anywhere from one to two, one to three percentage points. What did the polls tell us during the month of September after the party conventions? That's what the poll said. Those are the various polls. These are the polls that were so accurate at the end, not at the end, this is the just beginning of October, but this is what they told us during September. How many stories were there? Three different stories. One story said that during the month of September, this was the pattern. Another, other poll said, oh no, that was the pattern. And another poll, all by itself, Pew said, that was the pattern. I mean, that's crazy. Polls can't tell us what's going on during the campaign. This is what Gallup and Pew look like. Okay, what about 2008? 2008 going from left to right, you have a five point lead all the way up to a nine point lead. Not bad, I mean, relatively close. But what did the polls tell us? That's what they told us, and this was in the final month of October. Look at all those polls. Those are weekly summaries. Look at all, you know, we've got, look at that, compared with that, compared with this right down here, compared with this one right here, compared with that. I mean, they're very different stories. They can't all be true. And what about the daily tracking polls? These were the daily, every single day. Look at those things. It's incredible. We're trying to say that the polls give us an accurate picture, therefore we should trust them on public policy matters? My goodness, except until you come to the final end, when people finally have made up their mind, and they're about ready to vote only 48 hours away, then the polls can be accurate. Well, what about public policy matters? People haven't made up their mind, they don't have to. It's all a jumble. And instead, of measuring the lack of opinion or the lack of knowledge, the polls instead simply force people to come up with decisions. Okay, so media manufacture public opinion to tell an interesting story. That's why they do it, and they don't care. Such opinion represents the best, the shallowest whims of the public. It's often misleading, it's just not wrong. 
There is no distinction by the pollsters between current opinion and hypothetical opinion. Mythological public that they create is reassuring but inaccurate. It's one that says that the whole public, the people are basically fully rational, fully engaged, and so well informed that only a small percentage are unable to answer the question. That's crazy. If you believe that model, you, you know, you're not in this, you haven't observed Americans in this country. People just don't act that way. Okay. Where did it come from? James Bryce in 1888 was a very strong democracy proponent, said if the will of the majority of the citizens were to become ascertainable at all times, the machine, that would be the best for democracy. Unfortunately, said the machinery for weighing the popular will from week to week was not likely to be invented. Well, that was in 1888. 1940, George Gallup says, the poll is the modern answer. We can weigh the public. However, 15 years earlier, Walter Lippmann had already responded by saying, look, the theory of popular government rests upon the belief that there is a public which directs the course of events. I hold this public as a mere fan. Daniel Ankolovich is one of the great pollsters and great founders of uh, polling, and not founder, but one of the great participants that's still alive living in Southern California. He said that the vision of survey research was to strengthen democracy by permitting leaders to understand the state of mind, of the public and all of its subtlety and complexity to address the real concerns of the electorate free of bias. And I still believe in that vision. Unfortunately, the news is mostly bad. Despite the polling profession's greater technical sophistication, polls have grown ever more misleading. The media polls mislead because the prevailing snapshot conception of polling is radically incomplete. It leaves out of account essential information about the state of the public's opinion, whether it is stable or volatile, whether it contradicts other opinions that people also hold, whether people are aware or unaware of the consequences of their views, and how they respond to those consequences. Polls don't do that. The media, unfortunately, have no stake in the quality of their polls. They get them out there, that's all they care about. That's his conclusion. And with media control, Gresham's law applies in full force. Poor quality drives out good quality. It's a very pessimistic view of polls, of media polls, specifically, and of how they're dealing with our public policy preferences. That's the end. So I'm willing to answer questions if anybody has any. Okay. David, I always tell my students when 